Hello, welcome to my channel, The Blue Eye Crafter. My name is Jody Jordan and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today is April 23rd, 2023. Today I'm going to be doing some alternate projects with the April 2023 paper pumpkin kit called All the Little Things. So let's get started. I have four projects, three cards, and one scrapbook page. The first card that we're going to be making is called a lattice split card. For this card, I use the um, thick basic white cardstock. Um, I I chose that because when you cut your little strips, I feel like it would make the card weaker and I wanted it to stand up well. Um, I'm going to make a PDF of for you in the, uh, down below in the comments so you don't have to worry about measurements. But um, here I just cut um, three and one fourth off the front of the, off the bottom front of the uh, card base and I'm just cutting five half inch strips. Now this last piece is, is going to be bigger than the other five and you just want to cut it in half. And here I'm just kind of measuring, making a tick mark. I wish I would have made a tick mark at the top and the bottom. I actually moved recently and I have misplaced my um, Stampin' Up! trimmer. So I'm using this one and it's not the best thing to use because there's a big, huge gap in, in there and I couldn't hold it. Um, so my strip ended up being kind of crooked, which you, you probably won't be able to see that in the video. So now what I'm doing is I'm just adhering some washi tape to the back of the, or to the inside of the card and bringing it down and then securing it with the block. And you want to try and keep that straight and tight. Um, I ended up thinking that my card was crooked and I really just needed to pull it down some to straighten it out. But um, you're going to leave about maybe an eighth of an inch in between each uh, each uh, strip. And I just started at the bottom and went to the top and then went back to the bottom and the top and then the middle. You see, you can't really see the strips, but one of them is like super skinny at the bottom. But you're just going to um, glue this down with a um, liquid adhesive on each side. This is really a cute card. I um, actually uh, got the idea from a lady. Her, I think her website or her YouTube channel is May 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 Made It or May something May May. I'm sorry. Um, so now you're just going to gently remove the washi tape. And you could probably reuse it for the next card. And then now you want to cut the, the little extra strips that's left, the little tabs at the bottom. And that's your card base, quick and easy. Now I'm going to add an extra element. I want, I, my thought process was, is that I could use this as a gift card. So I'm using one of the card bases that was in the kit and I can't remember the measurement. I think it's one and a half inches, but like I said, there'll be a PDF. Um, here I'm thinking about what I want to do, but this is going to create a pocket that you can, um, for one, it'll make the card stand up. And for two, you could put a gift card or I seen online some of the ladies were using um, like little um, flower seed packets. And I thought this would be a really cute uh, project to do for um, every year I do like a special project for um, my customers when I send them their catalog. And last year I did like tea favors and I thought this would be a cute idea. Um, I won't be able to use elements from my paper pumpkin kit because I only get one and I wouldn't have enough, but I may be able to use another flower set to uh, create a similar look. 
it's not going to be as gorgeous because this holographic paper is just my absolute favorite. I love it. It's so pretty. Um, when you put it in the light, it changes colors. But um, I'm just going to basically glue this down to the, the, the bottom of the card base. And now I'm just, um, this is the, the flower that I picked. I thought this was perfect. It looks like it's growing up the fence. It's, um, I think it turns out really cute. Now here I'm going to give you a little tip about these Stampin' Dimensionals. You should probably put it on the card base versus putting it on the back of the, the flower because you're going to see here in just a second that one of the dimensionals ends up showing. Um, just a second, you will see what I do. And it was easily fixed for me. I just ended up cutting it off. But, um, you know, it could rip your paper or cause you to have to start the whole project over again. And you don't want, no one wants to do that. Here I'm just trying to figure out how, what angle I want it to go. See here, the, you could see where I started to rip it up and I was like, ah, I'll just cut it from the back. And that ended up working, so... So there's that. So now I am getting ready to do the sentiment. And originally I wanted to try and do something where I could stamp right on the lattice piece, but there's a space at the top of the card and I think the circle really makes it look nice. Um, I, uh, I could have used more more elements from the kit, but I was trying to stretch out my you know what I had so I could you know make other projects. Um, on here, I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the like lower, or no, actually no, I'm not. That's the other card. I actually really like this circle. I um, used it for a couple of the cards, but um, you want to stamp your sentiment right in the middle, and then. Sometimes I struggle with the photo Palmer's uh, stamps. I sometimes I prefer using like a stamping tool or whatever. But anyways, I'm putting a adhesive on the back here, and I'm going to use um, just kind of make little ringlets or a figure eight with the uh, twine. Um, I use the black for this card. I I really probably would have preferred to use the, the clips of coral one. Um, I'm just more of a pink or peach person. I mean, it looks nice. It still looks nice, but it's just what I favor. But I wanted to use um, all the parts for the, or elements from the, the kit. So I wanted to try and do one of the cards with the black. It looks fine. The stem of the, of the flower is, is kind of black, so are dark. So then I'm putting some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back and I just place the, the circle at the top. So I thought it would look extra cute if I brought in the brushed um, brass I think it's called brush brass butterflies or something, and it, it really looks cute on there. Um, the butterflies are kind of thick, but they're really flat, so they they tied into the card really well. You know, you always see butterflies around flowers, so you know, I thought it turned out really good. And this is the finished card. I can't wait to give this card to someone. They're going to love it. Okay, now for the next card, this card is really simple. Um, 
I just I just called it the a uh, simple a simple layered card. That's what I titled it. Um, you can see some of the measurements here that I have put. Um, I just wrote it on there, but don't worry about it. I'm going to make a PDF, so don't worry about trying to write everything down. Now, here I am going to stamp the sentiment in the corner. And later on, you're going to notice that I changed my mind about that. But I just cover it up. Um, I think it looks better with one of those little circles like we used in the last card. Um, so here is what I was talking about. I always struggle with the photo palmer sometimes. I just, I feel like sometimes I just, I'm afraid I'm not going to get it crisp and clear. So um, I, I prefer to use my stamp tool. Um, I'm really sad that we're not, selling these anymore and um I used to have a Misty but I gave it away to my friend because you know I was wanting to use my Stampin' Up products and I actually prefer you know the Stamparatus over the Misty because it has the extra you know arm you can use you can do scrapbooking pages and stuff like that um versus with the Misty, you have to buy, you know, the big one for scrapbooking pages. And that thing's like $109 or something like that. And it doesn't store well. It's big. It's It doesn't fit in an average drawer like the Stamparatus does. So, you know, that's just my plug for that. But, you know, they no longer are carrying it. So I have to get over it. <laughs> so these... I, I don't know what you call these. I don't know if they're berries, twigs, leaves. I, you know, I don't know what it is, but I just kind of went, a, randomly went around and, um, stamped those. Now, if I would have made this section a little bit bigger, I could have went around and stamped, like put the two white layers together. But because this, the stamp was kind of on the smaller side to do that, I just, stamped the small side then the or smaller panel and then the larger one the larger one you really have to stay to the outside to be able to see it so um if i would have put the two together um that's a totally different uh, card technique and maybe i'll do one soon to show you what i'm talking about but um this is really an easy easy card to do and quick the only thing that was frustrating me was I normally use my large stamp pads and I did not have shaded spruce. It's actually on its way with my uh, my pre-order that I've been waiting on for almost two weeks. It's supposed to be here Tuesday along with my Stampin' Trimmer. I ended up ordering a new one because the one that I'm using in this video, you'll see later on, I can't even use it because it only goes up to five inches. I, I can't, I can't even cut a card base. So I'm just going back and forth around the edge of the card. Um, just trying to fit as many in as I can. If I would have been paying more attention to my stamp set, I probably wouldn't have done so close together. And then there's like a little flower that I could have stamped in between. And that would have been cute. Um, I, I, uh, didn't have enough of the holographic flowers to, uh, do the second left layer. So I just kind of made it to where it went around the edges. So now I'm just gluing down the panels and this is, uh, I brought in the balmy blue. I kept calling it boho blue and I was like, I don't even own bo the boho blue yet. It's coming in my pre-order. I don't know why I kept calling it that, but. This is the balmy blue, and I'm just layering this um, layer to one of the white card bases that came in the kit. And then the next layer, I'm just going to add some dimensional to give it some dimension. Now I'm bringing in those flowers. I just, I, 
I cannot stress how gorgeous this paper is. Like it's, it's holographic. So it's like when the light hits it, it changes colors. So that is totally my thing. I love that. Anything sparkles, glitter, shiny. I love it. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out placement and then I'm going to pop these up. Um, I'm pretty much putting the, the flowers kind of where the stem part is. And then I'm like, well, this is where I, I'm like, I don't like that. Uh, I think it needs something else yeah. to stick out on the card. If I would have had more flowers, I might have, you know, I might not have done this. But I feel like this just makes it extra. Now here I'm trying out some other elements because there was like some banner pieces and some um, rectangle pieces that were in there. So here I'm, I, I'm definitely wanting to make sure that, that this is crisp and nice. So I'm bringing back my stamp tool. And this time I am going to try and stamp closer to the bottom because I'm going to put a bow at the top. So I just um, put that on with uh, dimensionals, and now I uh, I tied my bow. I don't know where the footage went from me of me tying my bow, but I did a double bow. I just used two pieces of string and tied it together as one. Here I'm just trying to straighten up my little ribbon or uh, twine, and I thought I was done, but. I decided to put the everdescent uh, rhinestones in the center of the of the flowers, and that's it. That is the card. It was so quick and easy, um, and gorgeous. Here's my photo of the card. So the next thing um, is a scrapbook page. I um, Wanted to kind of talk about we're having the, so since we have a new catalog coming in, the old one's going out. And some of the items are just 60% off. And two of the things that are on sale is this designer series paper and the dies that I used to, um, in this video. Now, the, the, the paper, it was, uh, originally, $12 and it's on sale for $8 and 40 cents. And the dies were regular $31 and they're on sale for $18.60. And this is while supplies last or until May 1st. Um, these are the dies. They're perfect for scrapbooking. They have these little corners. See the little corner? They have two different types of corners and, um, they really make the page pop. I like it. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, this scrapbook page. So when I use the dies, I, what I should have done is I should have backed up, I should have cut some cardstock and adhered the DSP to, on top of that to make it thicker. And you're going to see why in the video. So the card on the left or the that one on the left gives me so much trouble. So I took the white card base and just cut it in half to back this up. And I'm just trying to get a fill of my layout here. And uh, the rectangle, the white rectangle piece at the top was included in the kit. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to put dimensionals along the bottoms and the side. So that way you can slide your photo in. This is where, where I'm talking about. This designer series paper is very thin. And if I would have backed it up, it wouldn't lose its shape so much. You're going to see here in a minute, like it, it almost loses its shape. I end up making it work, but if I could do it over again, I would definitely have cut cardstock for this. But anyway, uh, the last chance sale, you really should check it out because they have some of the designer series papers for like four bucks. I normally am, you know, I'm not a 
I am a big paper hoarder, but it's I, I mainly hoard the Christmas papers um, because I do a lot of craft fairs and um, I work on projects all year long. And so I usually, whenever we have the the sale on the paper at the end of the year or at the end of the Christmas catalog, which a lot of the times the Christmas paper is never on sale because it's, it's just, you know, so the ones that sell the most are not like as cheap, I guess. I don't know. Cause some of the paper in there is gorgeous and it's only, like I said, four bucks for a pack of paper. So if you do a lot of paper projects like me, it's a perfect time to stock up. Um, we have a lot of ink pads and colors that are going out that, you know, you can get an ink pad a lot cheaper than normal. Um, I think some of the cardstock as well is, is discounted. So you should definitely check those items or check those items out before they're all gone. So here I'm just ripping off the dimensionals and trying to be super careful because this paper is very thin. And this one up here on the right, I don't have as much problems with, but you can see how it's like, it's just not holding its shape as well as if it was thicker. This one right here gives me so much trouble through the whole video, you'll see, but I fix it, but it's still in, to me it's, I don't know. I whenever I do projects, I always do them like extra. I'll do extra layers, and I don't know why I didn't think about doing that when I did this. Um, you can see how it's like kind of bent up there, and it's just not holding its shape. Like when you put regular cardstock down, you know you can put it from corner to corner, and it doesn't stretch out of its shape like this. So I'm struggling with it, and messing with it and I leave it alone for now but it's it's in the back of my mind really bugging me anyways I just cut another piece of um the designer paper to back the um already um rectangle piece that was in the kit I did decide to bring in a different stamp set for this one now normally when I do my scrapbook pages I don't sometimes I do a title but I really like to do the month and the year, but with this stamp set, it didn't have the year, so it 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 does the months and you can circle the dates type thing. So I just went ahead and went with this one that says a day to remember because I mean you know you can do a title page or whatever. I try to keep close to the right, um, because I am gonna add the flower to the left, and then I'm gonna add a smaller flower to the bottom. I think this um, page came together nicely. Um, it's 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 really hard to tell that the color Puppy Parade is in there. Puppy Parade is more like a red, but in here I feel like it looks so like pinkish. See, I'm messing with that. I'm making it worse because I want it straight. And so now I'm, I get the idea, well, I'll just glue it. And I end up jacking it up even more. I think I got it. And then I try to mess with it one more time. And you'll see. Hang on. It slides all the way down the paper. So learn from my mistakes. That's why we do this. To, to, to show you, you know, what not to do. Or what to do. And see what I mean? It just it just won't stay in place. It, it ends up staying. But... Um, if I was to do this project over again, like I said, I would back it with a thing of cardstock. But I think this turned out really cute. And it shouldn't be too hard to slide your photo in. Now, some people, they scrapbook and do their layouts with, with specific photos in mind. I do them ahead of time and then find the pictures that will fit in there later. Here I'm just gluing this down and then I end up putting some dimensionals on the edges just so they don't get smashed down when I put them in the binder.
I could, I could, I, I wish they would have made some, uh, like packs of this paper that we could buy because it's just so pretty. I, uh, the next card that, that we're making, um, my mom's already claimed it, which I was going to give it to her anyways, but, um, it's really pretty. It's got the bigger element like that we're about to stick down now. And I decided to use more of those iridescent or effervescent, whatever they call them, uh, rhinestones throughout the page. just to give it some more bling. And that is the scrapbook page, quick and easy. So this is my first time ever uh, doing an alter alternative uh, scrap or a paper pumpkin thing. So, I'm hoping to do more. I uh, ended up getting me a 12 month subscription. So here, I'll, uh, the next card that we're gonna make is, uh, I, I, I've i seen them online, like a lot of people send them. I've never done one. I don't know why. I thought it was a lot harder than it really is, but it's called a flower pot easel card. Um, it's really not that bad. Now, Another tip with this, again, I say back this paper up with cardstock because it's definitely thinner um, and this part is going to be the easel that stands up. So right now I'm just taking off three, I think it's three fourths or just making a tick mark three fourths of an inch on each side at the bottom. I end up putting this in the in an embossing folder, and you know that breaks it down the 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 fibers in the paper even more, and then I sponge it so that's even you know again, yeah, I can't wait to get my stamp and trimmer back. This thing is although it does cut really sharp, but it's just see I have to stick my finger all the way underneath there that that whole thing doesn't even move. So here I'm placing the pot in the quarter full tile. Now this is where you get to laugh at yourself or at myself anyways. So I'm getting the sandwich all ready for this embossing folder and I got everything put in and I'm like, what is going on? Why is this just, I'm basically just pushing it through. I, so I, for the longest time here, you see me, I can't figure it out. The embossing folder is not 3D. The whole time I was making a 3D sandwich. So eventually I get it, but I have to try it a couple of times. Now I'm getting it. I'm figuring out it's not 3D, so I'm, I'm, uh, now I have to fix it because the paper shifted. And finally, I can run it through. So I'm getting ready to sponge around the edges. That's completely up to you. I uh, Whether you do that or not, um, 
I just wanted to tie in the blue on the edge, like, you know, because it's kind of like the white on the edge, which it ends up looking really cute. I love it. Um, the way that paper is just kind of, I don't know what you call that, transition, var var variegated, I don't know what you call it, but it's fairly pretty, but I'm probably just favored to it because I love blue. <laughs> All the envelopes are in this color blue, this balmy blue. In my in my uh, PDF, I wrote down boho blue. I don't even have the boho blue yet. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just getting excited. So I probably would have waited um, to put the top layer on, and I'll show you why here in a second. But um, this is what I did. Um, I think I, I just to make sure that it's lined up correctly. I I make it work, but um, I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So I was going to use one of the card bases in the kit, but I decided to use the Calypso Coral um, card stock instead. So I'm probably up. At my cutting station, I have one of those guillotine type cutters that, uh, you know, your teacher used to have back in the day. Um, so here I'm just ripping up one of the, or opening up one of the envelopes because this is going to be part of my layer to mat the card base. See, it only goes to five, so I have to go on the other side of the room and cut everything. Which again, I marked on here what sizes they were, but that'll be on the PDF as well. And I'm just matting, matting the hard stop. So while I'm rambling on, I can say that I am a newer channel and I would appreciate if you would like, subscribe, share, you know, get the word out that um, I'm making projects because I really need the following. Um, I, I, you know, I'm get, I'll get the hang of this. I, um, I'm a little dry right now with uh, the voiceover, but uh, if you, a lot of people don't know that I just did this twice and I couldn't get the voice thing to line up with the, with the video, so I had to do it again, but um, I know, I, I know, you know, you don't come out of the gate doing it, knocking it out of the park, but um I think my projects are great and um, hopefully I'll get to where I can do like live videos and I would do a live video, but I don't have anybody to watch it right now. I'm, uh, I got to build up my, my followers. This is such a cute card. It's so beautiful. When I put this foil piece on here, it's just, it just pops. So here's what I mean. You, I lined it up with the bottom, but see how that, like the bottom edge of that, I'd rather that be covered up. And if I would have put that on last, I could have made sure that it was perfect. It, it's perfect, but so see here how it's kind of flimsy at the bottom. It's not standing up that great. So here's another element in the kit. Um, it's like a rectangle that is. Uh, Got the curved edge and I'm using the stamp. Uh, I'm grateful for all the, the little things you do. Um, I'm making this card for my mom. Uh, this card you will not be able to put into an envelope and send unless you make one because the elements in the flowers are too wide. It's bigger than the card base, but I knew when I was making this, I was going to give it to my mom. So 
she's like my biggest fan. She's, it's almost like I'm in elementary school and I'm bringing home my class project and she displays them in her room. She has all my projects that I ever give her. But I do a lot of like 3D stuff, like flower pots and like paper flowers and things like that. I made one one year that says mom and she still has that in there. She's probably had it in there for seven years at least. This is not going to last seven years because of the flimsier paper, but um, it's definitely cute. She's already been eyeballing it. And I told her that it was hers, but that uh, I had to photograph it first. So she'll probably get up this morning and want to know or ask me, have you photographed it yet? So this piece turned out perfect because I only seen one of these little flower elements in the in the kit. I haven't, maybe there's more in the bottom of my box. I tore all my elements out of the, and uh, stacked them in the box. But um, this is perfect to hold this in place to make it stand up. See, isn't that cute? But see how it goes over the card base? So, I mean, you could cut them off, but I think it would just look weird if you did that. Handmade and hand delivered is fine with my mom. <laughs> So I'm putting dimensionals, but I'm also going to put some little glue just to, for the part that's hanging over the pot there to stick it down. This, that's just the cutest card. So now I'm trying to decide if, what else I want to do. And I decided that I would tie some twine around the bottom to give it a little extra. And this is when I really wish I would have backed it with the cardstock. So I'm going to warn you that there is a spoiler alert coming up right after this. Um, if you don't want to see uh, the first look of the May Paper Pumpkin, then you may want to stop watching right about now. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. Okay, so spoiler alert. Here is the next, the May uh, Paper Pumpkin Kit. It's supposed to be featuring all of the new ink colors and I think two other colors. And it's supposed to be like real outdoorsy. Um, it also is going to come with a uh, kit. And I'm going to tell you, the add-on kit comes out on a, uh, May 2nd. And that's the exact same day that the new catalog launches. So you want to get your order in because it's only while supplies last. But for $10, you get 18 more cards and you get 18 more, uh, 18 envelopes for ten dollars that's a steal so you might want to grab that so remember to like subscribe and share for me so i can build up a following thank you very much until next time bye